Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to Cup of Tea with SB. SB Dub. Party in the club. Okay. <laughs> ba -ba -ba. We're keeping it simple. Tea bags. Not bloody. What was it last week, Mama? Loosely. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're back. And um, my wife's telling me I've got a bit of snot in my nose once again. Bro, it always happens to be my right side. Is it in my right side? My gosh, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> Start again. <laughs> Back to the squash talk. <laughs> chamomile, pure chamomile. Because I need to calm down and relax. Because my wife's always taking the mickey out of me. Better turn this puppy on. Last week I'm two from two. Wow! Chiefs to win, and I think I picked the Panthers. The Oxfords from out west to win. I'm two from two. Adi was one from two, so unlucky Oxfords so next time. <laughs> so this week, uh, well, I guess it's time to spill the tea. Sweet teas. SP. <laughs> <laughs> we got some honey from Bankstown. My brother in Bankstown. Shout out to the bro. Some strong stuff. This week, we're going to be talking all things New South Wales, Queensland, State of Origin and the big game across the ditch in Super Rugby because there's only two weeks left. And the outcome of those two weeks is going to determine who gets home ground advantage, which is massive in, in, in Super Rugby. I'm sick of standing up here. We're going to relocate. So that's how we roll in the Williams household. Give me some of that camel tea, mate. A little relaxing. Relax me. Uh, like always, the topic before the game starts uh, when it comes to state of origin is who got chosen and who got left out. So we've got the three debutants, Young, Tevita Pangai Jr. and Hines coming off the bench. The question for me is, and a lot of people, is how will they use Hines? So Cook got left out of the team. They went with Api Curacao, which I would have went with as well. He's just so dynamic and so skillful. Uh, asked the defence so many questions when he jumps out of dummy half. But how will he use Hines? When will he come on? Will he come on as halfback? Will, will he be a, more of an impact player because of you know how he's been playing at Cronulla. He's been running the running the cutter there. He's, his form has been that great that he he has to he has to be in the side. Uh, young, uh, this young man from Canberra. I've watched him and I've I've watched a few of his games. He's a quality young man. He's strong, skillful. But what I love about him is his work ethic. Uh, he will go all day, and I think that's why Ricky Stewart has airmarked him from a long time ago, from when he made his debut. That this guy's going to be a state of origin player. Brad Fittler has obviously seen the same things in him. So the, the, so the talk this week, uh, and rightly so, has been on Tevita Pangai Jr. I think this is a masterstroke by Freddie Fittler. Uh, Chaboyevich has been pulled. He done his calf and come out today that he's going to be out for six weeks. But I think with the inclusion of Tevita, you got Payne Haas, who's the best prop in the game at the moment. Freddie's picked these guys to go out there and do a job. And uh, when at this type of level, at this game, you, you've got to lay the foundations through the middle first. It'll be a hidden, hidden run mission for Tevita. I think he'll be out there for 15, 20 minutes max, just going as hard as he can, front-loading his energy. And I, I find the best teams in the competition in the last few years have done that. Their middles, their props, box, they understand that they, you have to front-load your energy to lay that foundation for the team, for the spine to come out and thrive. So that's what they'll be doing. The other talk is some of the comments that Tavita made um, a couple of years ago about you know wanting to represent Queensland. You know, for me, I firmly sit in the space of a man is allowed to change his mind from time to time. As simple as that. Obviously, we're in a different space now where a lot of, I guess, traditionalists have come out and said, oh, how dare he say that and still be allowed to play? Well, you know, it is what it is. Over 50% of players playing the NRL um, these days are Pacific Island heritage. I guess, put it this way, if we want the best players playing state of origin, then, you know, um, players that represent Tonga, players that represent Samoa, uh, are going to have to be able to play it, and that's how I see it, because I love State of Origin. I grew up loving State of Origin. I grew up being a queen, hearty Queensland supporter. Queensland, Gagai and uh, Ponga being left out of the squad. Now, Gagai, uh, I was really surprised. He's played 21 or 22 games on the trot for the Queensland, and he's always produced the goods. You know, he, he could be playing average for his, his team, his NRL side, but then when he steps up for... For Queensland, he always, you know, produces this best type of footy. So, you know, I was a little bit shocked that he was left out, but hammer for the Dolphins. Uh, he's been one of their best this year, and Dolphins have, have people are saying they've been a surprise package. But for me, when you got 
Wayne Bennett at the helm, they're going to play some good footy. Uh, he's been a big part of that hammer, so congratulations also. He gets a start, and then the, the biggest talk probably um, besides, you know, Tevita Pangai Jr.'s inclusion with the with the Blues has been Ponga being left out of the squad for Reese Walsh. I see it as nothing to do with Ponga's form because, you know, we got to remember well, 12 months ago in game three, Ponga was the difference. You got man of the match honours. He's a special player. We, we know, you know, ever since he's been in, in the grade. Young players, kiddy, kids play this game because of Ponga. He's an out and out star. But I just think it's for his health more than anything. You know, he's had a lot of knocks this year. He's been a stop and start go. Um, you know, besides the last couple of weeks, he's played really good, good for Newcastle, but he's still, he's taken some big knocks. I, I see it as a, as a great move by Billy Slater and giving him, giving him a bit more time in, in our route to, you know, produce, produce some more good, some more great footy, uh, get some runs on the board. Um, because state of origin, man, you know, if he's copying, copying knocks in NRL, you're going to be copying twice as much uh, knocks in, in state of origin. It's that tough. It's that tough of an arena, a place to play. So, Reese Walsh, uh, I can't speak highly enough of him. Broncos are there or thereabouts on the, on the table off the back of guys like him and Payne Haas. He's a good looking dude. He's sharp. Uh, I think a couple of years ago, before he made his debut with the Warriors, RTS Roger Tuvasa Sheikh said that this is the guy. So, when a player of that caliber says that this is the guy, I stood up and I actually started watching some of his footy. And I think where his game has progressed is obviously confidence, um, but just his work off the ball. Uh, if you know footy, you watch players and you study their work off the ball, and especially from a fullback's point of view. Billy Slater, the man, probably the GOAT at, at, from, the, and from a fullback's point of view, would have seen this, how he directs the traffic, where he tells players to, to push, where he fills in the gaps. And uh, he's been doing that great the last couple of years, in particular the last 12 months. Uh, Ponga, last point on Ponga, we will definitely, definitely see him uh, in the State of Origin arena, I believe, in the next, um, within the next two games. So let's go across the ditch to Super Rugby now. Massive, massive game this week. Hurricanes versus the Blues. For Blues, they'll be looking to shore up and, and keep things, um, control the controllables by winning this week and next week's game. Their best attacking weapon is their defense. They've attacked all year with, through their defense, strangled teams. But where they're starting to click is their, is their attack in the last couple of weeks. So for me, if Blues way to win is through their defense. Now we're talking about the Canes. They're probably the most exciting team to watch in this competition. This team is all about flair. You know, they're first in clean breaks, uh, first in defenders beaten. I think they're, you know, second or third um, getting into the opposition's 22, but they're first in completing and scoring tries. So uh, special, special talent within that squad. They've got nothing to lose. They're going to Eden Park. Uh, it's going to be against them. It's going to be a massive crowd. But I think off the back of last week's spanking, they didn't play that well at all. Um, I know what it's like in the sheds. I know what it's like in, a, in, in you know, team review meetings. Um, you know, some people, some of those players would have to take a hard look at themselves. But in saying that, when you have that glass half full mentality, like a lot of these players have, you'll be able to use that as energy to spur them on this week at Eden Park. So off the back of Adi, Salvier and Co's inclusion this week, they've got a full strength team going up there. Just attack, 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 and um, you know see where that takes them. So for me, my pick out of these two, off the back of what I've just said, I'm going with the Hurricanes. They're also Adi, Salvier and the Hurricanes. And my pick for the big game, State of Origin, is the Blues by two. This week, uh, I'm going against my main man, Bowden Barrett. Uh, also, we're going to um, screenshot this to post it up. And just write back your pick. It doesn't really need to be um, margins. Or if you want to, you can. And then probably just write at the end of it. I'm probably the um, most good-looking player that you've ever played with. Well, I'm also... <laughs> All right, Bella. Send love, bro. So let's see who got it this week. Let's go. It's all finished. <laughs>